There's a great piece of work that people can find at the cupboard and CoveredGlassPipes.com. Tell us a little bit about your Bliss Dancer. Uh, it's uh, a piece that uh, I did as part of a, a demonstration workshop at Glasscraft a couple of years ago. It's uh, based on uh, the Bliss statue, and the, the artist's name escapes me right now because I'm old and I have no gray matter left. I'll probably think of it in the middle of the interview and just blurt it out to you. But anyway, it's a, it was a statue that was uh, featured at Burning Man a few years back, and I've always been fascinated by that piece, and I attempted to recreate it in glass. Some lucky customers are going to purchase this and have it in their home. Give us a little backstory about how it was made and what you remember about making it. I've just been always fascinated by that particular pose. It's a very animated, expressive pose, and I always thought that the uh, artist that did it, I almost said his name, it's, come, it's going to come to me in the middle of this interview, uh, I always really thought it was a, a great pose, and that's really what inspired me, trying to duplicate the pose. It turned out to be very difficult to duplicate. The way the body is twisted, uh, the proportions, the balance of it, uh, it's uh, really a challenging piece. I've done it several times, but the one that's in the store is probably my best attempt. Who or what inspired you to be a glass blower? I've been doing this a really long time. I started in 1974, and my best explanation is I sort of blundered into this. You know, when I'm 23 years old, I'm going through my life like a blind man in a dark alley, and I literally blundered into it and just liked it and grabbed a hold and it's been 40 years. Do you have a favorite piece? It varies from time to time. Uh, there are pieces in my history that stand out. Uh, one of them might be a piece that's called wahine, which is the Hawaiian word for woman. It's a life-sized glass figure done in a networking technique. Um, I'm also very partial to the guns. The guns are something that uh, really resonate with me right now. Uh, so any of the guns could be called you know among my favorite uh, bodies of work uh, if I look back through my history there are others but that's probably enough of an answer you know, for this why do guns resonate with you because I'm not a gun person I'm a I'm a the opposite I'm a pacifist I don't like guns I don't own guns I don't shoot guns but I moved into a rural area where everybody owns guns and so in my attempt to understand them I started looking at them a little more closely and I noticed that they have an aesthetic. It's an architectural aesthetic, kind of like buildings. It's an aesthetic that follows function. And I started to get interested in the aesthetic and wondered if I could express the aesthetic in glass without the lethal counterpart. And as it turned out, it worked really, really well. So I came up with the idea of the weapons of peace. These are not guns. These are pipes. <laughs> They look like guns, so they're fashioned using the architectural beauty of, of, a, of a weapon, but they are pipes, not guns. Tell us the biggest perk of being a glass blower. Oh my God, it's a fun way to make a living. I, I've been hooked from day one. Forty years ago, I got hooked on the medium, and it's just a, it's a, a wonder and a privilege to be able to make my living, and these days make a pretty darn good living, doing something I absolutely love doing. You've been doing this a lot longer than a lot of glass blowers. Tell us how the industry has changed and some of the changes that you've seen. Where do I begin? Uh, the is industry is unrecognizable. From what I saw when I first came into this 40 years ago to where it is today, it is unrecognizable. It is expanded a thousandfold. The, the marketing, the, the number of people, the ability of the workers, the, the, tech, the, the, uh, the techniques, the materials that are available to us, none of this existed 40 years ago. It's uh, absolutely amazing to, uh, to have been a part of this progression over the last 40 years. It's really astonishing. I feel very privileged and honored to be a part of it still today. I hope I can hang on a little while longer. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. The Cupboard would like to help you stay in touch with your fans via social media. We know that we can see your work on CoveredGlassPipes.com. Where else can we find you on social media? Uh, this, I only do one social media religiously, and that's Instagram. I'm not a Facebook person. I, I, I simultaneously will post on Twitter, so I'm on Twitter as well, but Instagram is the way to find me. It's R.A. Mickelson. That's, that's my Instagram tag, and you can follow. I post a lot. You can follow me there. Um, I also have a webpage, robertmickelson.com, where I keep a, that's basically I keep a tally of all the work I'm doing. It's sort of my, my archive of all my, all my work over the past, I think it goes back to 1994. With your vast experience, do you have any advice for glass blowers? I only have to say, 
the pursuit of excellence. Keep making the very, very best work you can. And no matter what you do, if you do that, the world will come to you. You'll always be successful. We talked to other artists who have actually traveled outside the United States to improve their craft. Have you done any of that? I've done quite a bit of traveling. In fact, I, I, I travel too much, my wife tells me. Uh, and it's always about improving. It's always about learning. Sometimes I'm in a teacher's role, but it's still about learning. The whole life is about learning, right? You know? <laughs> Anything eye-opening from traveling outside the United States as far as glass blowing? That it's a cross-cultural appeal. Uh, almost every culture has its glass and glass community. Uh, the Japanese have a very strong glass culture. Of course, the tradition in Europe goes back, you know, a thousand years. Uh, Australia has a relatively new glass culture, but it's very extensive. Uh, it's everywhere that glass really appeals to, to human beings, I think. And uh, so everywhere you go, that, that uh, everywhere that I've ever gone and traveled, there's always been glass. Glass art. We've heard a lot that glass blowing takes a lot of time. How do you balance your personal life with professional life? I should let my wife answer that question and she would tell you he doesn't <laughs> he's all he ever thinks about is glass <laughs> and she's probably right all i ever think about is glass i have no life <laughs> we also hear a lot about the dangerous side of glass blowing have you ever suffered injuries yeah so it's part of part for the course burns cuts you know, that, that, those are minor. They're really, those are superficial injuries, that, and they go with the territory. I, mar I would be concerned if something were to happen to my eyes, or if I were to develop something like arthritis. A disease is far scarier than any injury that can result from blowing glass. So far, I've been lucky. Anything else we don't know about you that your friends would be surprised to know? Yeah, but I'm not telling you here. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't mind. <laughs> I got I to gotta have my secrets now, you know? Fair enough. Thanks for adding your cool story to our series of people changing the world of glass blowing. This is John for the Covered Insights on CoveredGlassPipes.com.